welcome to the ghost show online by fiends, booze, and ghouls. <laughs> Your hosts, Seeker Groves, Rachel Benton, and Ian Russell will discuss all things paranormal. Prepare to be afraid. 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 Welcome to The Ghost Show, and I am one of the hosts here, Sika, and I want to say welcome back. We've been away for a while, had a lot of things going on in our lives. Um, we took a fairly long hiatus, <laughs> longer than I wanted to, but I had house renovations going on, so there was a lot of things happening. Um, I want to introduce our guest, and then we'll introduce our hosts, but today we have the amazing, and I've had the opportunity to work with him, be a guest on his shows. He's had a few different shows. We're going to get him to talk about those. And he's an all-round paranormal expert, Stan Mallow. So welcome to the show, Stan and Rachel. Hi. Hello, everyone. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I'm I do apologize. I'm Rachel Bender. I'm a psychic medium uh, living in New York. Uh, originally, I'm from England. I was born and raised there. Uh, it's an honor to be back on the show again. Yes, we did have a little bit of a break. Um, I'm looking forward to engaging with everyone again, the audience. And Stan, welcome, Stan. I, I thank you all for inviting me. I look forward to this. Great. Thank you. And of course, we have Ian, our paranormal tech expert, who is uh, hanging out with us pretty much every single show. So Ian, <laughs> do you have anything to say after we've been away for oh, three months, I think? <laughs> yes, indeed. It's certainly been a while. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure glad that we're back. And um, yes, uh, hello, everyone. I'm Ian. I am a paranormal investigator and a paranormal researcher. And um, to echo what's already been said, you know, Stan, welcome. <laughs> Thank so, you. It's nice to be welcome. Thank you. Let's let's put Stan in the hot seat. Oh, okay. In the haunted hot seat. Uh, <laughs> so, Stan, I've been on your show shows, I should say, because there's been multiple shows. Um, yep. I don't even know how many times, but you've had me on as a guest and it's been a great experience every time I've been on. We've also had, a, you know, we've always had a really great conversations about interesting topics. And so today we didn't pick a particular topic. What we picked was you as our amazing guest, but we wanted to hear about some of your experiences and maybe even some, you know, tips that you might have for people who are perhaps just getting into the paranormal realm you know they're they're finding interest in it they're hearing different things so i thought maybe what we could do as uh the host regular host is ask you a question and then maybe you can answer those questions with your experiences so i'm going to go first i have a question i think that as somebody who works in the paranormal realm quite frequently and i do a lot of tv work um, I want to ask you the question of, as somebody who also does television work, um, what is your experiences with spirits and actual television when it's filming? I mean, do you feel like you get, have you actually been in a situation where you've been doing some sort of investigation or perhaps uh, you've been at an event and they've been filming and something happens or is it all kind of just developed for television i mean i have my own views on this so i'm mm -hmm. just curious is that you know is that a question that you can answer do you have you know do you have that experience oh absolutely yes i have many many experiences well as you know you live in the probably the most haunted areas on the planet, the Niagara region. And as you know, many, many places there are haunted in Western New York, as mm -hmm. well as in the Niagara region. And I've had 
many experiences uh, over there. Um, the uh, cemetery on Lundy's Lane, uh, where a number of people are buried over there, uh, including famous people like Laura Secord, uh, going over there. I was going over there and picking up all kinds of energies. And I don't know how some of you work. We all work in different ways and there's no right or wrong. With me, I, if there's a spirit energy, I feel it. And I would take Ray, my partner, who was around there, I'd say, take a photograph and boom, uh, around Laura Secord's um, a cemetery over there, uh, a stone there, huge, huge, huge uh, orb coming up over there. And there are places all over the place where you don't know. And you were saying before about uh, some people about how would you go about looking for it? Never assume what you're looking for, where it's there, it's going to be or not going to be. Uh, you have to be very, very open with it. Like Lilydale Assembly, which isn't far away from you in Western New York, uh, which is the largest spiritual community in the world. They have a pet cemetery there. And I was visiting Lilydale uh, when I was living in Niagara, so I was going there more often. And I remember going to a little tape recorder, uh, hoping maybe to pick up something from the pet cemetery. Nothing, nothing at all. <laughs> and I go, oh, I, I go was, there, right been back, the and you hear a little puppy barking with oh. that. So what I'm trying to say is, you know, wherever you are, don't assume anything. Or like there's a uh, a, a prison in uh, Ottawa uh, that was really infamous. It, they did it now to a uh, hostel where people rent rooms mm -hmm. and you know sleep there. And so I, they also do tours. So I went there and I thought, well, I'm going to pick up a lot of energy in there itself. Not that much. I couldn't understand <laughs> it. But I went outside in the garden area in the field there and took some photos. Boom orbs all over the place. And that was the area where they hung the people. So right. sometimes, you know, if you're going out to a place that they say is haunted, don't assume maybe it's in that exact area where the person said it. What's causing it? Where's it coming from? So I find this whole thing with spirit, you never know where they are, where they're going to show up. And uh, I, I think it's uh, beautiful the way we go to that. Like at Lily Dale, if you heard of the uh, Kitty Osborne, may her soul rest in peace. She was a long time uh, medium at Lilydale. And uh, she was doing a ghost hunt, whatever you want, in Cunningham Lake Hotel in Cunningham Lake, Pennsylvania, which is supposed to be one of the most haunted hotels on the mm -hmm. planet. And uh, she invited me. I'm very happy about that. Wow. And we picked up so much energy over there. So the way I, I, I work, or wait, it's not, it's just the way that it is. I, I feel something, and usually if I take a photograph, something is going on in that. Uh, that's why sometimes I find it, it's fun to go with different types of people with different skills, go with, yes. music, go with this, go with that, because each person contributes uh, uh, to it. Yes, I've been on many, 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 uh, I don't know if you want to call it ghost hunts or whatever you want to call it, there's different terminology, I don't know what is more correct mm -hmm. than the other. To, to, Answer your question. Have I many, 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 many places I've been to? But also, you learn uh, sometimes your place where you are, say something, don't say something. Going into that, I remember one time being at a party and somebody saw me, and I'm sitting on the sofa there, have my hand on it, and I see this image of a young lady, and I knew she was dead. Now, you're not going to tell your host or anybody, oh. by the way, you know, what's going on. So after the party was over, I asked about it. Anybody die in that? No, not at all. And came back to me a few days later. Apparently, the person who had that apartment, they had taken their own life. Oh. And the super had given that sofa that belonged to her. So you never know. So that's why now I'm very careful before I touch something, especially when it's of a certain age. Uh, to see what's going to be there. So I'm sure all of you work in different ways and each one always complements the other. I, I agree with that. Now, have you had any experiences if you've been filming? That's kind of my interest, right? Because I do a lot of these television yeah. shows and I find that often when we're doing the shows, it's very disruptive within the within the space. 
So you don't tend to pick up as much as if it was just perhaps yourself or a small group. I find sometimes when all of that stuff converges that, you know, it's sort of, it, actually I should say that it could go both ways because we, we did a session at the bell tower with a TV crew and the TV crew set up and we got some really great stuff. And it was very funny because the director who was also acting as the cameraman that day, he didn't really believe in this stuff, right? He was just kind of like, yeah, you know. Yeah. And uh, we went into the small room up on the second floor and I did a, a little session in there, asked some questions and we got some audio. He actually picked up audio on his equipment. He was just blown away. So I'm wondering for you, if you've had that experience too, like, have you been on a television shoot or filming something for your own um, shows and it's either gone one way or the other? I mean, it's a pretty open-ended question, but I find it's either completely flat or all of a sudden it's just crazy because <laughs> it doesn't seem to be an in-between. Uh, the only thing I could say with that is when uh, Spirit will come in and do some stuff with the uh, TV show, either mm -hmm. it would shut us off or yeah. things would start shaking uh, <laughs> with that. And obviously we have no control over things like that. Mm -hmm. um, but what has happened, no, we're living on television, but it's like a backdoor to it. So I'll, I'll talk about that. You know that uh, my partner, Ray, and myself, we've organized so many years, uh, psychic and paranormal shows yes. throughout Ontario. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them, we did the oral photography. And we also did oral photography uh, at a number of health shows. And that, uh, and what I'm talking to you about now, I really haven't spoken about with anybody, but since you're talking about uh, mm -hmm. situations and experiences uh, with the unknown and what could happen, I'd like to share a few stories with you then with the aura camera and what it picked up from that invisible world uh, with it. Uh, now, um, I remember very clearly this man, woman, young child, comes, they all three of them want their aura photo taken, which is fine. First person to have the aura photo taken is the young lady, maybe 10 years old, takes the photo, it comes out, and standing behind her very clearly, you can make out all the features, clothing, hands on her shoulder, is this man. Now, I'm not going to take a, tell a young girl, you know, uh, there's a man, you know, standing around you. Uh, so I didn't say anything to her. But I went over to the mother and father and I said, by any chance, would there be any reason why someone from the spirit world would be around your daughter? And the woman actually asked me why. I showed a photo. She almost fainted. It wow. turns out the man she was with was not her husband, but a current boyfriend that she was going to marry in the near future. The man in the photo was the father who oh, died wow. oh. of a massive heart attack. Okay. She's maybe when the baby was one year old. Oh, so wow. Came that from the other side. <laughs> Absolutely. So I figured if somebody came from the other side, uh, I'm going to give her that photo. She should have it. And I says, if any time in the future, uh, your daughter asks about her dad, hey, he's with you. He's always with you. And uh, people around me said I was crazy. I should have kept the photo. No, somebody comes from me. I believe in karma. Somebody comes from the other side. I'm going to show that. Now, how do you explain that? Uh, you can't say maybe because it wasn't like hazy. Could be this, could be wow. that. And something I didn't know. Oh. So uh, that that is something. And what's not with TV, but it's showing something that I was part of. Just taking a photo and boom, you see something like that. <laughs> That's a really neat story. Like that's something literally like Ian, you would know since you do a lot of this type of stuff with the equipment that when you get something like that, that's just, you, you want to try to debunk it, but at the same time, it's just, it's right there in front of you. And oh, it's absolutely. Yeah. That's fantastic. And, wow. Yeah. Like, you know, with orbs, you've got to make sure they are yeah. true orbs, not cigarettes, smoke, uh, mm -hmm. circles coming and things like that. But then, how do you explain this? I don't know. Also, I don't know why, but maybe my aura camera was a catalyst for these things because a number of other things happened with them. 
Now, this is something I'm going to share with you. It just came to my mind. I haven't spoken about it in years, but I think you're going to find it interesting. You know, they always say there's a special bond between a mother and the child and the daughter. And it's an old wife's tale. Is it true? Whatever. At any rate, this young lady had come to us for aura photos two, three times a year. And she's always like in the same color range. Didn't vary. She becomes pregnant. Her aura changes. Totally different color. Okay. Oh. She gives birth uh, to the baby. And she has a photo taken after she gives birth. And she's back to her old color. So I was wondering, what? did she pick up the color from the kid? I didn't know. So I said, we, wait, we had to wait a few years. I said, you know, when the kid gets older, I just out of curiosity, I'd like to take the photo. So when the little girl was a few years old, she came, took the photo. She was the exact color that the mother was when she was pregnant with her. Oh. So you're not going to read it. You're not going to wow. read about this anywhere. You're not going to read about this anywhere. But it's something that I find fascinating. I thought you and your listeners, viewers, you know, mm-hmm. might enjoy hearing that too. When they say there's a bond, there's validity in that. True. Well, and here's the thing, Rachel and I both being moms, Ian's a dad, but we, I think we we get that, right, Rachel? Because yeah. it, it's another life inside you and that That's energy true. is really all consuming when you are oh, ready, yeah. right? That's so. True. I, I could see that as being very plausible. Like for me, you telling me that story, I see that as very plausible. I wouldn't debunk that and go, oh no, that's just, you know, I I actually would think that yes, because that child within you does use up all your energy. That's um, true. That, yeah. you know, it's projecting that energy. I was, what a, what a really neat, like that aura camera. I have a friend who had one too. I've never really experienced one myself, like having sat down to watch a session or to see, or even have myself, um, you know, I've had people tell me my aura is like this really bright yellow red. I don't know what that means. <laughs> but, you know, it's like, I'm, I'm happen but what a what a neat story Rachel do you have a question that you would like to ask Stan I know you haven't had the interaction with him that that we've had the opportunity to but he's just got yes um you started the paranormal yakker and I wondered what was um what guest that you've interviewed that really stood out to you like what 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 guest that you've had perhaps besides Seeker that, (laughs) that was memorable uh for and 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 why that's a very good question, uh, and I want to be very careful how I answer that question. Oh, sure I don't want you to throw anyone no, under the no, bus. I'm, no, no, I, I would never, never do that. Ever, never, never. Uh, I, I mean, I, I'm sure all of your guests are different, and they're good in their own way. But I will tell you one, uh, the Honorable Paul Hellyer, he was the uh, former uh, Secretary of Defense of Canada, uh, oh. the only person member of the uh, G8 who said unequivocally that UFOs are real. Oh, no doubt about wow. It. And uh, he, he, God bless him, he passed on at 90, age of 97, not that long ago. And that was one of his last interviews with that. I wow. found that fascinating because he was privy to a lot of uh, information uh, that the public wasn't. And uh, definitely, you know, when people, I'm not into conspiracies at all. Uh, mm-hmm. But however, when they say that the government sometimes is not totally open with you and they want us to distort things and do that, there is definite validity in all of that. So I, I found that fascinating speaking with him. Also, he was one of the first pers- people uh, to talk about the, uh, the, the the new type of money that we have now uh, and uh, about that. And he said it's people who lose their money with that. And he said that a few years ago, and it's turning out to be uh, true uh, oh, with all yeah. this uh, hidden money type thing that's uh, going on. So uh, yeah, he would be fascinating because at 97, wow. he had so much experience and all the people that he spoke with and all the things he was involved with with UFOs. So yes, I, I did find that quite interesting, but I'm sure as the case with the three of you, Everybody has something different uh, yeah. with that. Well, yeah, I mean, everybody's got their own stories to contribute, but how interesting. So that 
that episode is up on the uh, Paranormal Yapper, we can go and view that, yes? Yes, in fact, I'm quite proud. A recent issue of Nexus Magazine has oh. uh, an interview I did with him featured and I'm on the front cover, so I'm happy about wow. that. <laughs> yeah. So that's uh, pretty good. Yeah, he's a fascinating guy. So many people are there, and, but also uh, people that have interested me were uh, academics, people who for many, many years would not come out and talk about it because they would be belittled. And did even to this day, people are saying it, but more and more things are coming out, as we all know, uh, that um, it's difficult to hide all of this, mm -hmm. uh, what's uh, going on. So yeah, he was, he was in, if you ask me about one person, I'd say him, it, it was enjoyable talking oh. with him. We'll have to go and, and catch that episode for sure. Yeah. I haven't seen that one. Um, that that's an interesting interesting thing, like you were saying, because as myself being an academic, I have a bachelor of science in archaeology, and I do spend a lot of time as a historical expert on television shows. It's really hard to to walk that line of, you know, people. I, <laughs> you know, you don't want people to perceive you as being crazy. Um, but when you have an ability and, you know, again, we've talked about this before, I think everyone has this ability. I just think in some people it's been shut off, you know, through the way they've been raised or, you know, different things. I really don't think, <clears throat> excuse me, that we are any more special than the next person. It's just that we happen to be in tune with this, you know, these, these outside energies or this sixth sense as, you know, they like to call it. But I do find that difficult to, you know, walk that line sometimes without sounding like I'm crazy because I have something that I like to call paranormal archaeology. And that is literally when I used to be on archaeology sites, I would be picking up on this energy and these feelings of the sites and perhaps spirits that are still residing there or even just the overall energy. And I could not share that with my academic work buddies around me because they would just think I was <laughs> not yeah. quite right in the head. Um, but it, it is very difficult when you are academic in that sense. And then you start to talk about, you know, paranormal and uh, that I've been very lucky to have um, producers on TV programs be very open to that. So, but yeah, great, great answer. And I will definitely go check out that episode. And good question, Rachel. Ian, do you have Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, um, Stan, uh, when um, you and I first met, it was at the uh, paranormal conference that, that we had here. And at the conference, you presented to those who were in attendance a couple of the crystal skulls, which was very, very impressive. And uh, I would be interested in hearing more about these skulls. Is there anything that you can you can elaborate on them? Buddy, I will take this as a good sign that you're asking about that because I am completing a book about that that's going to go into oh. detail about it. But to give you a Reader's Digest version of it, um, I uh, Spirit had guided me to it. And the energy in it is so incredible because you were part of it. You saw that too. And what I've been doing now is getting a list of a number of people who are signing affidavits of when they were in it and what is the reason uh, for them going there and what the results were. And they're absolutely amazing. And I take no credit for anything. I, Spirit has led me to something and I'm there and I'm to share it. And that's what I do. Uh, before COVID, I was going to various places and doing healing circles and um, working on with it uh the history of it i don't say how old it is because i've had mediums and other people go to it and i know some would say it's like ten thousand years old five thousand this i don't do that because he, he, even the mitchell hedges crystal skull which is probably one of the more famous crystal skulls there it's x amount of years only because of the, of the medium who picked up on that and I prefer to be exact what it is. So it's not necessarily the age of it, the energy of it. I, I think anybody uh, 
whatever they have, if they have their own crystal skull, if they're tarot deck, you put your energy into that, you absorb that, and then you bend it out. Like I don't want to do tarot cards, uh, when I do tarot card readings now here, and my energy is in it, but also the other energy of the person who is touching it is in there, because everything is energy. Energy is all over. Like I have um, a house in an old rocking chair. Uh, uh, my grandmother had brought it from Austria many, many years ago, et cetera. And people say, oh, why don't you have it, uh, you know, refer, you know, refurbished, you know, make it look good. No, because the energy of somebody in the family that's been there, been holding it there. And that's why it's rubbed like that. So mm -hmm. I, I'm a very big believer in energy and picking up on energy. I think most people, and uh, as Sika, you were right before, you said everybody has it. I believe it is, but some people suppress it either consciously mm -hmm. or subconsciously uh, with it. But uh, most people, the answers are within them and nothing, you know, it isn't stone. In fact, I'm a firm believer, and I would tell it to anybody, we are not born with a compass and a map and a whole life that is in front of us where we were born. It's not a stone. It's not like that. I believe in free will. You have free will and it's up to you to do something. I'd be very careful if somebody said, well, this and this is going to happen and you yeah. can't do anything about it. Think about it. Maybe you can do something about it. I, I, I believe people ultimately uh, control their own lives, but it's very important uh, for those who want it and need it. Psychics, mediums are very good at setting people in direction but that person has to make the decision themselves and go with the consequences whatever they might be that's very true because i know rachel and i as you know we we had uh, episodes where we did just you know call-ins to do to do live readings and and yeah. we weren't using any tools it's just ourselves and our own energy and yeah. i don't know how many times we've told people and even when i was doing readings at your uh, psychic you know, conventions and, and things that, yes, we indeed have free will and that, you know, what I'm seeing right now, and I like to think, and I don't know how you feel about this, Dan, but I like to believe people sort of go in, in patterns of energy. And I find they generally shift about every six to seven months. Yeah, and yeah. so if you're doing a reading with someone and, you know, like you said, you might see something, but you're not necessarily going to deliver it in a very, you know, cut and dry method. You are going to use that free will um, that it does tend to shift. And you're right. Like I know even Rachel. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, that. you're right. And there's that expectation I find with the general public, especially at psychic fairs, where they expect you to do certain things. You know, they expect you to cleanse your table. They expect you to have your a tarot deck for you even, you know, where's the tarot deck <laughs> or an oracle pack or your little runes. There's, there's like this expectation uh, that I find very interesting. And then they, they're they quite baffled if I don't need that. It's like, I'm, I'm fine. I don't actually need that. Um, it's kind of there for show is display <laughs> i just don't need it you know i go off questions and see what i can get from that energy and just move on from there um I, yeah i don't feel that i need those things but yeah it seems like that it, the, the other people do it's it's sometimes it's table dressing <laughs> <laughs> i i i agree with you or some people are brainwashed or from certain movies oh you have to do that. No, you don't need right. that. Right. And it's yeah. just it's just a tool, mm -hmm. you know, but you're good. Even when you're doing a tarot card reading, working the way yes. you are, Rachel, that's going on there. You're giving what it's the message it's giving you, that mm -hmm. it's sending you what exactly. you are picking up for it. That's right. Yes. So can I ask Stan then for you with the crystal skulls? you you feel as you're the conduit correct so you're the conduit that that you can deliver these messages that you're getting through the skull and but you're not actually the person how do i say this you're not receiving the message in a sense you're receiving it from the crystal skull is that is that correct in in the way that i'm thinking that i never thought about it but i believe you are right yes Yes, and the cat, you know, it, it was a reason why it was given, not given to me, because right. it, it, I had to go to a lot of different places with that, on that there, to put the energy into it, 
and I'm picking it up. Yes. Well, there's a lot of things, you know, you don't know what, I'm sure you know this too, uh, whether you're doing readings to somebody or investigating all the places there. Sometimes there's no wise, oh, you know, whatever there's everything ha doesn't have to be, well, a reason. Some things are because they are. Sometimes yes. we tend to go too involved. Well, why this and why that? It is what it is. And you uh, deal with it. And sometimes I'm sure you've had the incidents like this where things happen. And even if you give somebody advice, they don't necessarily ate it. it <laughs> oh, boy, do I know that. <laughs> But that's okay, you know, you just pass, I think all you can do is pass on the guidance and uh, yeah. let people do what they will with it. It's all about that free will. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, but at least you give people uh, food for thought. Like I remember this uh, young lady, very, very young lady, and I picked up this thing right her. I see her being slapped, the tooth coming out. Oh, wow. And you say that, I said that, okay, goes on. That was her boyfriend. And uh, what, why you let him do that? Well, uh, I guess she was brought up at being abused. And she says, well, if he does that, because he loves me. If he didn't love me, he wouldn't hit me. And, and it went into my mind and upset me so much that somebody could be brainwashed so much that they, they, have to, they associate violence with love. Mm -hmm. There's no connection with that. But what do you do? But I, at least I hope I gave her some food for thought. No, that's not the way it is. That's not love. You shouldn't be doing it. Good you should get the hell out of that. Right, right. And you know, yeah. that's kind of the, the thing. You so could have saved her life as well, Stan. You could have saved her life ultimately, you know, got her out of a dangerous situation. So let's ask a question that I know, Ian, maybe you haven't thought of, or, you know, I just want to, I'm just interested, Stan, do you like to work with technology, like paranormal devices, things like that? Because I know I don't, um, Rachel's not real keen on it either, but I mean, I have used them, but I almost find that they, they shut me down because I'm too focused on the device and I'm not really letting my own energy out there or sometimes they actually interrupt my energy i found that like i've actually found that they interrupt my sort of channel to you know what's happening how do you feel about using equipment i mean it's it's not a here nor there or a right or wrong question sure sure just for me uh, of how i work okay one i like picking up energy so i like being pure mm -hmm. using nothing but just going around what is it telling me what is spirit telling me to there but i also like a, a, to use some devices like where there is energy there so if i'm picking up something somewhere i like to have it i like to go with somebody who's doing the tour but let's say i'm picking up very strong energy from that corner over there mm -hmm. why don't you go and if you see what's happening with the tools how high the energy is in there but to go back to your original question I personally don't use anything. I prefer not to use anything. My mm. choice, but not to put down as you're not putting down. It's just different tools, different mm. people, you know, work in different ways. Like when it comes to reading, so what's better? Tarot deck, uh, pendulum, this, that. It's what works for you. Exactly. The old adage, do that not be right. true. If you work with what's you, even when it comes to a tarot deck, it's like hundreds of them in existence now. Yeah. Some people say, well, I tried enough, does nothing for me. Try another one. Maybe get one that works for you. Bottom line, not to be repetitive, to thy own self be true. And if you are, things work out. Right. And in Ian's case, and and you know, much like like my partner, my husband, he they're not, they they think they're not intuitive. <laughs> 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 So they like the equipment and, and so, and that's okay too, right? I always joke about it because I, like I said, I feel like everybody is, it's just whether or not they're kind of in tune with it, but. Yeah, well, I'm the, I'm the scientific paranormal investigator. I'm the tech head. Well, but I'm inclined to agree uh, that uh, everybody is psychic. You may call it a different word now you can't get any more uh masculine if you will say they're like police officers okay mm -hmm. and uh what are they doing with tarot tarot? what are they doing with doing a psychic there and i've got to 
meet and speak with a number of them with different crimes and stuff like that. And they are there. They pick up eventually. They could see 20, 30 people out on a corner. They know the energy is coming from one. There's a problem there. And they do it. Or we should stop that car. Now, if you hear some of their psychics, they'll say no. But they know. They pick it up in time. In two it's like minutes, gut feeling, right? You, you get up. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. I'm it's sure about learning to listen to ourselves. That's that's what I tell people. So let's listen to that. that well, so, yeah. <laughs> Ian, you, you can't, can you say that you've never picked up on anything like in your gut, a feeling, an intuition? Oh, certainly. Um, I, I do listen to my gut feelings, but okay. when it comes okay. to paranormal investigation, um, you know, I am not sensitive outwardly in, in that regard, as I say, I'm the scientific uh, investigator. Okay. And what has to happen is if I'm going into a location, the only way that I can pick up on something that's going on, and I have, and it's when there is such an overwhelming presence within the location. And then like you, you walk in through the doorway and you just get slammed with the energy. And I've had that happen. But as I say, for me, it has to be very intense but it for me to register that. Yes, but it did indeed happen. So erase the word gut <laughs> feeling, sixth sense, whatever it is, it's all the same thing, you know, rose by any other name still smells as sweet, you know, whatever. It's all true. It is all there. How many people, I'm sure, in your viewing audience over there look back in their lives at times when they had a gut feeling about something, whether it's a job uh, to take or not to take, a person to date or not to take, and they say, well, maybe I'm wrong, and only later on they could kick themselves in the backside and said, I should have listened to myself. It was there. So that goes along yeah. with what you're all saying there. It's there within you. It's just to listen to it. But sometimes people do need somebody to tell it to them. And hopefully they tell it to them and the person will listen. That's what I'm wondering if people who may have be more sensitive like us who are mediums uh, and have sort of gifts are um, who, who may possibly have their own like... Um, brush with death I mean I've had near death experiences and I was wondering like if that was a factor perhaps you know um I've knocked at death's door a couple of times so maybe I thought that's maybe why I might be more in tune with spirits and uh maybe why they think I'm like a telephone uh -huh. <laughs> that they can use that's very interesting that you say that because mm -hmm. I had a number of well, I've always sort of been intuitive, but in the wow. years I had a massive heart attack where I went over to the other side and it was told uh, Ray, who was with me at the time, and it's told by the doctor there, if there's a next of kin or anybody over there, you call them. They did not expect me to make the night. That's how bad I was with that. And I went over to the other side, was given certain messages, things were happening which I know they turned out to be true. But anyway, I was there back to the other side. And that's when things became stronger and spirit guided me to the crystal skull and other things. Wow. Oh, with that, wow. never really thought about it all that much, but uh, thank you for saying yeah. that. Yeah, oh, yeah. no, that's oh, it. just something that happens to me too. I uh, had near death experiences uh, when I was born. Uh, they put oh, me wow. in the crib and the crib actually collapsed and uh, I was on it. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's 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 it is interesting. I've had more than one near death experience, but and I do feel that that has like strengthened a connection and made me less scared, perhaps, of the other side because I've already been there. I already feel like I have that connection with it. Um, but with agree, yeah. <laughs> thank you. Oh, with, uh, can I just ask about uh, the book? Are you writing a book? Mm -hmm. Yes, 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 I've been very book that uh, one of my calls procrast. I've been writing a book for Finish it. many, many <laughs> years. For many, many years. And again, one of the reasons is something we talk about at the beginning over there, because mm -hmm. some of it is so to the other side, so outlandish, but it was true. And I'm saying, hey, you know, I'm not getting any younger. I better start doing this soon because I guess I'm afraid or was worried about what. What are the people going to say? 
Could that be? No, don't. Thing? Be yourself. Be true I'm to yourself. I'm myself. I'm my own worst enemy in a way. Yeah, I think <laughs> all are. So, Ian, do you have another question for Stan? Well, I was going to ask um, about the paranormal equipment, which uh, you beat me to it. So, <laughs> so my question really has been answered already. It's okay. Because I'm, I'm just always, you know, fascinated with all of us. And when I say all of us, I know, Rachel, you understand it's, it's like you said, we all have some kind of ability, whether we're tuned into it or not is really the, the key. Like, I know that Ian likes to, you know, say he doesn't, but I do feel he does because when he tells us, when we talk about this on the show and with the equipment and everything, it seems to go a little bit further. And I think sometimes, like you said, we don't really allow ourselves to kind of believe in those things. It's, it's sort of a, an interesting conundrum, right? Because it's, it's just such a unique experience to everybody, right? Like we do all have our own way of, I guess, interpreting it or understanding it. And while there are similarities, there are certain things that do seem to connect us. I think that it's really just a very personal experience. So let me ask you this, Dan, because I'm really interested because I know now, I mean, you know, I'm well into life at this point. <laughs> when I was very young, I didn't really understand what was happening to me. I would see things, I would hear things. I just, you know, I didn't get it. My mother was, you know, not 100% supportive. She used to say, oh, you're just having a bad dream and go to bed. Um, but, you know, I've, I've soon sort of discovered different things over the years and it changes for me. And this is what I want to ask because the way that I perceive things or receive things I've noticed now is a lot different than it was when I was in my 20s or when I was a teenager. Um, now I'm, I really just... I'm able to understand what's happening as I receive it. So here's an example. If I'm receiving something, um, I will often find that if it is um, medically related, right? So like, it's like somebody, a spirit wants to kind of show me how they've passed. They will give me some sort of indication whether I get a pain or I get some sort of strange feeling on one side of my body or there's something happening. Um, or if they want to show me visually, it always shows up on my right hand peripheral side. So whenever I see a spirit, I never see it as a, like a full body embodiment of a ghost, right? It always kind of just appears here for me and I can see it very clearly. I can describe it. I can tell you what it's wearing, how it looks, what it smells like, all of those things. Yet it's not, you know, it's not a physical manifestation of something. It's just here. Um, that is how I perceive things. So when I do come in contact with spirit and I do have an experience where they want to present what they look like to me and that I see them here. I have talked with other other people with the same type of thing where it literally just rolls right up and it's right there beside you. And if you look directly at it, you don't see it, but it's that peripheral mind's eye that can can pick that up. Do you do you relate to that or is is your experience something completely different? Well, my experience is the way I work with spirit, or rather the way they work with me, because well, if they yeah. don't want to, they're not going <laughs> to do anything. Uh, for that is, it's the whole, the entire body, the entire person, the entire energy, yep. and it seems to be working with me. With I find that people are earthbound, there's usually a reason for it, obviously a, a message, and they want to speak speak to you on that. I don't know if you heard of uh, Emma's Back Porch Restaurant in Burlington. Uh, yes, I'm, been I'm aware many... of it, yes. <laughs> yes, okay, it's supposed to be very haunted there. And I went, I was invited to go there and picked up certain energies and certain things going on there. And, you know, the message was over there. Apparently at one time, uh, that the days there where people got dressed up and they were elegant. And nowadays people don't necessarily get dressed up to go to the... Uh, um, restaurant, eat, but right. then the message to me was about you got to be a night there where they're going to you know, get people should be dressed up. I have like a special night for that, and then going on finding out, yeah, they had that at 
one time with that. So you know, with me, it's the it's the whole package. It's not part of it. I feel the whole energy for that. I connect and I, I find I'm a receiver of messages from them uh, to me. But if, to answer your question, it's not part. It's the entire energy uh, that I'm picking up from someone or something that's going on there and trying to find out, you know, what what it is that they want, uh, what would they like to accomplish, what's going on, what message they want to have for somebody else. Again, it's one of those things, I guess, I, I can't then, explain it. It, ask, just, it, just ha- it just happens. Yes. Right, right, yeah, exactly. Do you uh, get a sense of smell, too? Because with me, sometimes I can oh, smell I things that belong to the deceased like um, cigarettes that they smoked the majority of their life or a perfume uh cigars another one <laughs> flowers, like a a flower, scent. Yes. yeah yes the answer to that is yes and there's usually a connection to that yes yeah right. and i agree like for me like even though i can see them here in my peripheral i i experience everything about them i mean it's not that i'm not but the visual is always here for me um you know and that's the funny thing like it's it's not like I'm looking right at them like I'm looking at you right now or you know it's it's always in that peripheral although I'm experiencing everything I mean I've honestly had moments where I'm fairly certain that they've they've visited whole body inside me because I'm seeing hearing feeling smelling everything that they you know that they went through and it's a it's a really interesting I mean you know again this is why paranormal is so popular is because I think it is just unexplainable in terms of you know everybody's experiences it's all very individual it's all very much you know our own thing right so and and I'm I'm really happy to say Stan that I'm you know the shows that we've done together when I was on your show and then when I was on Paranormal Yakker um and the previous show was the Paranormal show yes that's yeah, that is correct yeah. show. and that was I mean I had so much fun on the shows and you know doing talking about all of these different things and we've covered a lot of topics I mean over the years we've covered everything from the Victorian occult to having live readings on air where people would call in and I would answer their questions and do all these things so it's been it's been a lot of fun and I mean I always enjoy working with you in you know whatever respect it might be and I'm certainly hoping that we can you know once COVID's maybe petered out just a touch more so we can enjoy you know a larger I look forward to a totally mutual wonderful guest you're genuine and that's that's good too you didn't put up any front or uh any ears no I I'm just me (laughs) and you were and you You were good that's the thing I'm just me and I love that we can sit and we can have these conversations and I look forward to when we can plan the next paranormal conference and you definitely have to bring back the crystal skull and do that healing session again it was mind-blowing it's just I I mean we can't even express to I'm eager to see it I bet it was great listening that you know even though we did video some of it you just can't you can't encapsulate that energy that was coming from the skull and you and you know the ability to touch the skull and to be able to you know feel all of the it it's I I know people will be skeptical but you need to come and and be a part of that yeah you know you know if somebody's a true skeptic Mm-hmm. I'm all for that. But I have found, I don't know what you have found, but I have found maybe 98% of the people say, I'm a skeptic. They're not a skeptic. <laughs> they made up their mind. They know they just want to give, they don't even listen to you when you speak. No. I, 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 I love debate. I, I think it's great. It's healthy. This side, that side. But these skeptics, I don't believe it. You know, you know what, what do you do? Like what's happened with my circles here, where somebody is there. And a loved one is in a hospital, and you know it's only a matter of time to go to be healed, and they get healed within 24 hours. Just coincidence. A lot of skeptics say, like, the bottom line is, I, I really don't care, uh, but, you know, but it's just very sad. But the bottom line is, people are going to be helped by it. That's it. Or they'll say, uh, you tell somebody something in a reading, well, how would you know? How did you know that? How do you know that? You, you, yeah. you picked it up. 
So I, I, I don't know. I don't know how many real skeptics there are in the world. And uh, one of the things that made the circle wonderful with your group, Sika, at your show, was that everybody was into it. And just like one person singing is wonderful, a whole choir, that much more of that energy is going out there. And there was quite a few people who attended that. I have to say that. Certainly. Yes, very nice. Yes. Well attended. You did a good job. Too bad. Well, you'll have just have to recreate it in oh, another building. Yeah, well, again, like yeah. I say, you know, perhaps we can start a planning session for 2024. We just have to find a new amazing location that will work for what we want, right? Because that I think that was the beauty of it. And you know, not we're not tooting our own horn here, but I think that was the beauty of what made that conference very different from other conferences was the location. You know, it wasn't just a big empty sort of utilitarian mm -hmm. conference space. It it had its own energy, its own spirits, its own ability to charge the room and charge it was a haunted location. It was a haunted location. Yeah. So now if anybody's listening and you have a haunted location that can fit even a hundred people in various rooms at different times, we're really open for you know that kind of that kind of experience. Because I think that that's what was so great about this was it wasn't a big crowded, noisy conference. It was a place where people came who were interested, they listened to our speakers. They participated, they got a reading, they got to talk to, like we had other great guests too, like Tim Shaw and, you know, and, yes. you yeah. too, and all of these like really wonderful people that, that came out, right? Cat from Cat and Monkey in Niagara, all of these, these really wonderful people who work in, in, you know, different realms, but just so interesting to speak to. So we'll have to get on that again, but it's, St Stan, before we let you go today, I want you to tell us about the Paranormal Yakker. I know we touched on your guests, but tell us about the show and then, um, you know, give us, give us just a little snippet of what we can expect when your book does come out. Sure. Yeah. I just want to give a, a codicil to what you had just said about, the, about your show and the energy and everything over there too. Yes, the place was very important and it was very good. But you and your guests and your attendees all contributed to that because you could feel the energy. Everybody was into it. It wasn't like a joke or anything else like that. Oh, it, it was serious. So that's part of the puzzle too, going in with that. Okay. Yes. Okay. My show, Paranormal Yacht. Yes. Okay. Talk, talk, talk to us about that. My, my pleasure to do that. Okay. Uh, I, I'm the host of the Paranormal Yacht. Uh, it's a YouTube show every week. Once a week, I have a different guest of note. Happily, you were one of them on that. And hopefully your other guests over there will be my guests down the line too, if it meets their uh, schedule, because I find you all quite interesting. Oh, that's that. one. So, so, so if they peak people, oh, I, I, I love it because I get into UFOs, ghosts, haunted houses, um, a, a, empaths, uh, reincarnation, different subjects in the paranormal. So if they're interested, they go to paranormalyaka.com and press the subscribe button. It's free. There's no charge for it. They'll each week, they'll automatically be sent a uh, copy of my interview from that week. And they'll be able to also uh, look at past ones that I've done uh, for a number of uh, years. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's pretty much it. I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to talk about my show. And I got to say, it's been an absolute glorious being on your show. I, I really miss this. I hope the next one will be an in-person thing. Yes, me great. too. I mean, it's been it's been great. And, you know, we always, like, I, I love to get together with with you and Ray and just, you know, we, we've we been for lunch and we've been for dinner and we've got, you know, and I miss doing that because with COVID, we were sort of all, you know, in, in this weird realm. Um, but I'm hoping that, you know, we'll be able to get back to things and definitely start planning something, hopefully for 2024 and, and bring the paranormal conference back. Um, and it was called the South, it was Southern Ontario, Western New York Paranormal Conference. So we yes. sort of joined 
you know, forces. We brought people over from Buffalo and different places so that um, because we're in the Niagara region. So it is really just, you know, sort of one big, one big area that um, yes. is filled with interesting people. So hopefully we can do that again. Ian spoke at the conference as well. And mm -hmm talked about his experiences and did and so I think it was just it was just a really great time and, and I loved having very special memory yes it was it was so I'm gonna say thank you so much for joining us today and you know we didn't have a like a real show planned out because I wanted to ask you you know just different questions I wanted us to all have a chance to hear you speak instead of us you know sort of going on and and you know <laughs> you answer a whole lot of questions right I, I like to just be free with that but thank you so much Stan well I thank you all it was a pleasure being on the show I enjoyed it very and, much and please tell us when this book is going to you know arrive because I know that um, I I have one in the works too and it's been in the works for years and honestly as somebody who's trying to go back and remember because I'm just terrible at, you know, when I'm on a, an investigation, I don't want to take away from that by talking into my phone or doing, you know, taking videos or anything. I leave that to the tech people like Ian or my <laughs> husband or somebody else. But at the same time, um, yeah, it, it takes years and we're never really done, are we? We're no. never. We're always done. learning. Yeah. And one of my childhood heroes, Yogi Berra, it ain't over till it's over. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> That's it. Well, we got to get those to that. Out. So I, I next time, like when you're ready, let's let's talk about the book a little more for another show. Yeah. I'd love to hear, you know, without giving everything away because we don't want to ruin that for for reading. No, perish the thought. <laughs> touch on that. So I want to say thank you again so much, Stan, and for everybody, you, uh, you know, that's listening on our. Uh, podcast because this goes out as a podcast and then it goes up on youtube as well um it goes out into the land of podcast feed and people can pick up the show and listen to it i want to again say thank you to stan for coming on to our show today thank you for discussing some of your amazing experiences um, i want people to know more about your crystal skull healings and your circles so again can you plug your website for us so people can visit Sure. ParanormalYacker.com. Right. So ParanormalYacker.com. I will put that up on our website. We'll put Thank you. And on our Facebook group, which is The Ghost Show. Let's get spooky. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, we will say goodbye and thank you again. And we'll see you soon. Um, I should note, it's going to be a bit of a weird podcast situation because I'm actually going on the road next week and I'm working on a television show and I'm filming and I'm going to be down in Louisiana for almost a month. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. It's warm. <laughs> Maybe a little sporadic in between again, but we'll get these shows back up and running and, and uh, Ian, our, our lovely editor, we can, you know, put some of our previous episodes back up. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, we can go from there. But again, thank you, Stan. We will thank see you all. Thank you. It's yeah, been a pleasure. You very much. Thank you, everyone. I'm back. <laughs> we'll see you again on the Ghost Show. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching the Ghost Show online. Join your hosts again next week as they discuss more tales of the supernatural, the paranormal, and all things spectacular. See you soon. See you soon.